That was the weirdest sound check in the world. Mm. Mm. Hi, Hi everyone. everyone! Oh boy. <laughs> Today's slip is about Norway. The country in which we got engaged. Yes, so stay until the end to see the most epic proposal in the world. If you want to see Dom crying. I was not crying, it was winding on top of that mountain. Winding, it was winding. It was winding. I don't think winding, you can say winding, it was windy. I don't think you can say it was winding. It was winding on top of that mountain. Gosh. And I was not crying because it was winding. Yeah. Okay, so let's check it out. Hi, we're Dom and Marie. Since 2016, we traveled the world by van looking for the perfect road trip. Until we decided to buy and convert our own little home on wheels that we named Vanessa. Every Sunday, we share parts of our van life experience with as much details as possible. Tips, tricks, and stories that we hope will inspire you to start your own travel project. But for now, buckle up, subscribe, and enjoy the ride for this new episode of Van Life Sagas. We landed in Tromso, which is up north, and we drove all the way down to Oslo. That's a couple of hundreds of kilometers. And what, sh what you need to know is Tromso is a very northern city. Yeah, it's above the Arctic Circle. It's above the Arctic Circle by 300 kilometers. So it's very, very much north on the planet. I mm. think it's the third biggest city north of the Arctic Circle. It is, yeah. And it was pretty nice. He um, looks smart, but you Wikipedia did it. Yeah, you you Wikipedia did it, it. Yeah, so we went camping and we did parts of the trip with my brother and my sister in law. They had was... rented a car and they had their tent. And what you need to know is you'll see them during the clip. They're much more hardcore than us on outdoor stuff. Hi. <laughs> Bye, Thierry. Bye, bye. Hey, je pensais qu'il y avait un oiseau qui faisait du sur place. And we rented from Arctic campers. The Arctic camper vans are. Well, the one we rented was a passenger, a Volkswagen passenger. Yeah. And it's a very nice little van to travel in the country because what you need to know is that the streets can be very narrow in the low Fultons. Yes. So you want a smaller car to explore that court, that country. So very nice van. It had a heater which kept us really hot at night because it can be pretty cold in Norway, especially Up in north. in Tromso. And we asked um, Henning, the owner of the company, why the Lofotens were one of the best places in the world to do van life, and his answer was pretty amazing. I'm uh, Henning from Arctic Campers in Tromsø. The freedom to roam, I guess, that's a big point. You have the, the right to, to sleep wherever you want, so long you don't bother. What is actually most fun is the hunting for spots with all the fjords, you know, and they're all small parkings, and you can even drive down to the beach, or, or even in the mountains you have small uh, not closed small ways where you can go on the lakes and stuff like this. It's so big, the country, and you have so many nice spots where you can be. It's, it's amazing. It's the best uh, circumstances you can have for campers. Mm -hmm. I'll be free as a bird in Walmart Park and I'll be free as a bird no Walmart parking lot. Étant un gros fan de hiking dans un pays comme la Norvège, comment tu te prépares? Good from Utken, Schroen, Frugen. Hiking. Hein? Barbette? Yeah. Under lion. Under. Okay. Meat and lion. Run. Poof and jack. Cash, cash the packing. The packing? Cash the packing. Suldosen, and the Julian collapsing. Is Julian collapsing? So in our first couple of days in Norway, we hiked Senja, which is a mountain we had seen on social media. It's like a big rock that goes like this, and then it's like flat, and you have like orcas at the bottom in the in the fjord. And Dan was like, we need to go there.
and we hiked for two or three hours until I realized we were on the wrong side of the mountain. So that day we climbed up once, we went down and we climbed all the way around because we couldn't see like the big crevasse and the big mountain. So we climbed it twice that day. Let's go. Do not try to go over oh, people have fallen off the rocks. So I brought Marie. Actually, I wanted to bring Marie on a special adventure for her birthday. And I was super proud that I have found this adventure for you. Because I was like, oh my God, she's gonna flip out. But everything went wrong. <laughs> and nothing actually worked. Um, we're not gonna name the company. It's just, it's not their fault. The weather was very, very bad. And I wanted to bring Marie on a deep sea fishing tour. It was a private so. tour, so you rented a boat for the four of us. Yeah, it and was we were expensive. supposed to go deep sea fishing. So you get there and you put like big suits because it's the water's really, really cold. And the first thing we learn when we get there is, you know, you might not go really, really far and you might not catch anything because the conditions are horrible. And we're like, you know, we're here and we paid and it's not refundable. Yeah. So it just cost us like let's do it. Bucks, yeah, so that was. Go. And so we went on the boat. We we were there like what an hour and a half and all we did was like go around we didn't do we didn't do shit, shit. <laughs> So we just drove around. We, we just we just drove around waves and salmon farms. That, that was nice. We saw cold the salmon weather. farms. That was cool. It was cold weather. Uh, everybody was kind of getting sick. So in the end, seasick. Seasick. So basically, your uh, birthday present was a cold, damp boat ride. <laughs> I think I think you owe me now. And if I might be spared, as the tempest starts to swell. At this point, it's just too dark to tell Was the stars guiding me to God's shores now? Was the devil set me drifting once more? Will these clouds ever lift and the map again reveal? At this point, it's just too dark to tell if these green night blues so after this fishing trip that was not a fishing trip uh, we drove down to a place called Enningsberg. Mm. Enningsberg? That was probably the most beautiful hike I've ever done. It was a short one, but a hard one. Like oh, yeah. the, the mountain is like like this. Short in terms of distance, but like... But hard. Yeah, really hard. And when you get on top of these mountains, you're like in a James Bond movie. Or in we a, talk about a different movie every, every time. time. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're like in a movie. It's, it's you just see all the Lofotans around you, all the islands, all the, all islands. the mountains, all the, the northern part of Norway, and you're like. And we got there for the crap. sunset. Yeah. I know we say that every video, but that was probably one of the nicest hikes I've ever done. That's one of the nicest places in the world, I think. We called your parents from up top. I remember we FaceTimed them because it was too yeah, too, too beautiful. Like, we wow. wanted to share that with them. Okay, so the the hike in Henningsberg is named Fes Fesvagtind. And in Enningsberg, this is a little fishing village. Yeah. And at the tip of the village, in the ocean, they built a football field. Like soccer field. A soccer field. Yeah. And you can literally see a football field on yeah. the island. I was like, who had the idea of that? And why? Why there? And the football field has no, there's no, there's no places where you can sit down. The field is surrounded by fishing racks where they leave all the cod to dry. So mind blowing. Yeah. Like you, you wonder why they built that 
there. And I guess I guess it was for the kids of the village. Yeah. But even here, we, we don't, don't have, have a that, field like that. No, it's <laughs> like David Beckham could play there every. It's, it's just freaking it's beautiful. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. So when leaving the Lofoten to go back on the continent, you have to take a ferry. I believe it was a four hour, three hours and 40 minute ferry that will take you to the continent. So you leave from Moskenes and you go to Bodo. It's probably not the right way to pronounce it. Bude. Bude. And when you get there, you drive a couple of hours and then you get to the invisible line of the Arctic Circle. So the van was standing exactly on that invisible line. 66 degrees, 33. Fait qu'on est à 66 degrés nord, 66 degrés 33 minutes nord. That's it. C'est beau, hein? And what's nice about this this place is that they have a center and mm -hmm. we met with this guy Pontus and he Such a nice guy. he told us about the Samis which are the indigenous first nation first nations of the of Norway and we learned that the first nations are the only one that are allowed to take care and hunt the reindeer yeah since the summer people are taking care of it so well, they're not using big factories and doing all these things and leaving big carbon prints to, to produce the meat, it's a very uh, fav favorable choice from my side to eat reindeer meat. And it's, yeah, it's extremely delicious. <laughs> so he had some reindeer meat in his restaurant and we ate some. Yeah. And I was like, Man, this is so amazing. And Pontus is there, uh, it's his fourth season? I it think? was his fourth season, yeah. And he's just super amazing. Like he was alone, probably alone most of his days in low season, right? And when we showed up, he just gave us food, started yeah. talking about everything, uh, told us about Norway's economy. About the Sammies. And... About the Sammies, about the food, about the tourist uh, seasons. It was, it was crazy. Oops, and we saw reindeers as well. There were, yeah, the center was surrounded by reindeer, so he was not bullshitting. He was like, well, look at them, they're right there. I wanted to bring Marie on a hike because I had a plan, and my plan was to propose to her. Because I'm wonderful. <laughs> and I wanted you to, you know, to recognize yourself in this magical moment. So I, I needed a forest or a cliff or a, a mountain or a hike. And I wanted us to be alone. On va faire une hike, la dernière hike du voyage. Comment ça s'appelle? Morkanga. Morkanga. Toutes les hikes ont des noms de vikings ici. Ça fait qu'on va s'étirer comme des vikings. Ça, c'est du twerking, c'est pas de l'étirement. Let's go. My first plan was to go to Trolltunga, but there were many, many, many tourists that day. So instead, we went, we went to Morkunga. That's a hike an hour north of Oslo. Yeah. And we were alone on the path. So I was really happy. And um, at one point, we got there. I was super nervous. Um, <laughs> What you need to know is that Dom, being a photographer and wanting to document the engagement, he had me stand on the cliff for like 30 minutes because he wanted that perfect light and he wanted to set like three cameras because he was setting cameras and I was just there standing and I was like, what is this guy doing? I've been waiting for like 30 minutes. He's not coming like am i what what's happening and then you came and you started crying and i was like what is he doing and then we got engaged and we got to the top of the mountain and here's what happened <laughs> C'est pas vrai, hein? Oui. Allô, il peut vivre? C'est pas la bonne main, mon loup! J'ai pas entendu. Fait que. Fait que. 
You want to spooze me, baby? <laughs> I do. Okay, I hope it. I hope it. It works. amazing trip in Norway next week because it's almost Christmas. Two new things. One, we are doing 10 gifts for a van lifer and we are going to host the biggest contest. We have like, not, not a contest, a giveaway. It's just a giveaway. It's just, just a giveaway, give it's not a contest. to people online. We're going to give away everything we have. No, but we are giving away like close to a thousand dollars worth of things. So you might want to tune in for that. And, and, the, and the only way you can actually get something is to watch the video, right? Yes. And second of all, uh, in December, we are not going to do the French listen because Dom is going to do a ukulele Christmas song. Every week. There's Every a week. ukulele Christmas song. You're going to see. So <laughs> see you next week for the giveaway, guys. Bye. Bye. The last French lesson of 2020. Veux-tu m'épouser? Will you marry me? The is for will, and tu is for you. It's the same order in French and in English. M apostrophe is for me, it's just a pronoun. And épouser is for marry. And now you will say it doesn't sound exactly the same. This is because in French, we replace the verb marier by the verb épouser. It's the archaic way of saying marry, and it's espouse. So we could say, will you espouse me, if you want the exact sentence. However, espouse sounds a bit like a poop. We don't say that. Instead, I invented a new word, spools. Like in the sentence, will you spooze me? <laughs>